We are ready to test the dyno, uh, the water break dyno setup that we have made here for um, for a marine application. As you can see, it's um, it's a land and sea water break that we have connected to this um, this table here that we can raise up and down, and it's all uh, it can all be adjusted in all positions. So if, uh, if there is any movement in the boat or anything like that, that's okay. As you can see, we added uh, an arm here and put a regular load cell. It's a regular load cell from your dyno here. Of course, uh, it's important that it sits freely here, so there is no bend on it. Uh, then uh, we have uh, the your dyno uh, RPM sensor is here, and we, we made a small, small wheel here. There is uh, cables or water hoses going here and to the the brake valve that's also from um, land and sea uh, that's a quite nice unit it has a stepper motor included uh, has um, uh, a built-in uh, stepper motor controller here so it can be connected directly to your dyno without any additional hardware it's uh, hooked up to this battery here uh, so it's uh, easy to connect back and uh, up and down we have a quick quick connects here oh <laughs> gotta put it back again uh, so that we can uh, we can easily um, uh, easily hook it back uh, in and out then we have made a calibration system here we have a, a bar that goes into the hole here so we have a long bar and about 100 kilos of, uh, of uh, calibration weight it's all hooked up to uh, the, the water plumbing here an accumulator tank here, very simple accumulator tank. Here is a, a valve that gives us about four bars of pressure. We let adjust it a little bit to see if it's appropriate. And uh, about four kilowatts uh, water pump here. And this all goes into a tank inside, so we have enough uh, enough water for for some long runs. All right, this is the first time we'll try it out with everything connected. So. It's going to be exciting to see. Land and sea water break valve. It looks like this inside has this nice uh, pattern here and it's just a regular stepper motor that moves it directly, no gearing or anything. So it moves about a quarter of a turn. So and the motor has 200 turns per revolution so it's only 50 turns from max to min. It goes in here. Like that motor controller that uh, comes with uh, this, the water brake valve from uh, land and sea. See there is a small little board in here. So this one um, does all uh, you need to control the stepper motor. You can control it directly to your dyno with no extra uh, box uh, at all. So the water brake valve is here. We have it hooked up to the, to the, um, uh, to the battery. And then there is this other cable that goes directly into the Yordino box uh, here. And uh, I've set up uh, the system to, be, to use um, um, a CWCCW mode, meaning it has two pulses, one that goes clockwise, the other one goes counterclockwise. And that's how this uh, stepper controller is set up. And I just experimented with a few valves, this values, this is appropriate. It's only 55 steps between zero and 100% brake, so it's quite fast. You see, if I, if I drag this back and forth like that, you see the value goes back and forth pretty nicely like that. We're doing the calibration. We have done a zero calibrate already, and now we have added a long arm like that, and about 50 kilos here, 51 kilos. There. The trick with this long arm is that you can tell your dyno that your load cell is here and the arm is all the way over here so there's a long arm and this means you can get away with a, a smaller weight than you otherwise would would use so we did the zero calibration and i just pressed the load calibrate and as you can see it looks super stable there at 51.8 kilos so we can save the calibration now as a, a double check you should always remove the weight again and see that it goes back roughly to zero so let's do that so now we removed the calibration weight again you see it's, it sits at zero so we are ready
here's the results. So as you can see, the curves look pretty good. Around uh, 238, something like that, horsepower. You can see all the different runs we did with a lot of different setups, different uh, flow, different uh, parameters for the PIDs, etc. In, in any case, it's pretty, pretty close. You can see if we turn on all the curves, um, we have they all align a little bit. Here we can see some effects where the brake had too much um, too, too much KP and KI, I believe it was. And uh, it got to be a little bit unstable here. But uh, you can see in any case with all these different parameters it still overlaps pretty good. So we found the best, uh, the best parameters. Uh, we're, more, we're about this one for now. But this is it's anyway just some uh, some early testing, we'll, uh, we'll test more.